Praise the Lord. Give the Lord another great big hand clap. Amen. Welcome, world. We've already been receiving greatly from the presence of God. This, to everybody out on YouTube, all over America, Japan, South America, Europe, that watches these great services here and joins with New Day Christian Center, I want to introduce a woman of God. This is Tamina. She's part of our church family. She's also a minister of the Lord. And in the last days, what does Joel chapter 2 say? Does anybody have it committed to memory? In the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and men will see visions, and old men will have dreams, and he'll pour out his flesh upon all your handmaidens. And... Everybody that's alive is going to be, have an opportunity to be mightily used of God between now and the great catching away of the body of Christ. Yes. This dear, precious, anointed hand, handmaiden of God has begun to develop in a powerful ministry of divine visions, night season visions. Some people say godly dreams, but they're more than dreams. They're visitations and of the Lord during your night seasons and they're mm -hmm. taking you into the kingdom realm in your night seasons. So they're, they're, they're kingdom manifestations of the gift of God. They're not just dreams. And this young woman of God has been coming into a fluency of entering into visions and dreams and visitations of the Lord in her night visions. And she's been faithful, a good scribe, to document them and write them down. And I asked her, I said, please prepare yourself. I'm feeling an urgency in the spirit for your ministry to start coming more into the forefront. It's time for your minist these kind of ministry gifts to become commonplace in, in the service as often as the Lord will. And uh, so prepare yourself. I want you to share some now words from the Lord and visions of the Lord that apply to the body of Christ and New Day Christian Center right now and she said yes pastor and, and did and she's ready and I want to hear from God and it's not going to just apply to this church but it's going to apply to the church and to the entire world so give the Lord a great big hand clap as we hear from the Lord Amen Amen. Thank you everybody thank you for, for this wonderful church and this wonderful body of Christ and Amen. it's been such a home to me and I just feel so humbled to be here and I thank you. you. Speak so loud your yes, voice. okay, speak up. <laughs> so before I share this with you, uh, this week and more like last week, I was praying to God, what sh how should I introduce this, these dreams and visions to all of you? And I was fasting throughout this week. Praise In fasting, God. fasting just trying to hear a word. I went to fasting to just get a vision of what I should introduce by. Yes. And the word he gave me was weaknesses. Weaknesses. And the first thing I thought of, weaknesses, I thought of Paul. Yes. I thought of Paul in 2 Corinthians when he was, be, he was a faithful man of God, very faithful, but he always got oppressed. He was stoned. He was stoned. He was continuing to walk in the, in, in the voice of the Holy Spirit, he was just walking. And in the second, in Second Corinthians, he goes back and he writes the letter to the Corinthians. And he was talking about, um, let's turn to Second Corinthians, let's see. Second Corinthians 10. Hallelujah. No, Second Corinthians 12. 12. Thank you. Yes. We're going to start off at Second Corinthians 12, 7. I'm reading the NIV version. Yes. Okay. We we'll still love you. All right. <laughs> Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will not boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that in Christ's power may rest on me. Yes, that is, yes, that is why, for Christ's sake, I am delighted in weaknesses, in results, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. From when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Amen. Amen. So, 
Growing up, nobody in my family is saved. I moved here two years ago and the Holy Spirit actually led me here to Texas from Connecticut. One thing I can tell you, I did not grow up in church. I, w I, I prayed though. That's one thing God always put in my heart. I didn't know why I was praying every single night. Since I was maybe 12 or 13, I prayed before I went to bed. And sometimes I wouldn't wake up when I was 15. Oh, I forgot to pray. Let me go back. And I, and I would pray. And wow. at the time, I didn't really see God's hand in my life because I didn't seek God. I didn't see him because I was just pretty much ignorant. I didn't understand. Yeah. So two years ago, it was, well, three years now in college is when I started seeking the Lord my senior year in college. And I was becoming more obedient to him and trying to understand who he was and trying to build a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And then on March 4th, 2015, I finally gave up my life to the Lord and was baptized by water. And um, ever since then is when I've been seeking God and seeking his wisdom. And it's just been a transformation because through that, through that time, I had a lot of weaknesses, a lot. Even to this five months ago, I had a lot of weaknesses that I hadn't dealt with, no. that I didn't know yes. how to deal with it. Yes. And the reason I said weaknesses is through those weaknesses, I've gained strength through God's grace. Amen. I did not understand what grace meant. I didn't at all until he showed me the word weakness. And it's through grace, because Jesus said he was, he's full with grace. And through that grace, we can overcome our weaknesses. Through our suffering, yes. we can yes. come our, overcome the, all that because of our grace. Amen. So about four months ago, um, I was transformed by grace. And this is a mighty power that I, have, I truly understand now. It's a mighty power. I don't think it's just a word. It's a power. It was a force that transformed me from just me seeking the word to me getting these visions and dreams and having confidence to speak about them. Um, so four months ago, I, I just opened up my word, the word, to the book of Daniel, Daniel 2. Um, in Daniel 2, it was about Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar, yes. king of Babylon. Um, just to shorten the time, I'm just going to give a quick synopsis. So Daniel was with the king, and God gave him, gave him the, the ability to understand visions and dreams yes. while uh, he worked for the king. So. The king was tormented by dreams and visions, but he couldn't quite remember what um, it was. It kept him from sleeping. So then he summoned his magicians and enchanters and sorcerers, and um, he brought them forth, and astrologers, he brought them forth and asked them to tell him what his dream about and to interpret them. But they all said, we can't do that. We cannot interpret those dreams. Um, and the king, of course, King Nebuchadnezzar, was furious and because he wanted interpretation of the dream. So um, King uh, Daniel, Daniel was like, he didn't, ch -ch -ch. Daniel went to the king and asked him about, well, he prayed first. He went to God. He prayed for the interpretation of the dream, and God gave him the ability to know King Nebuchadnezzar's dream and the interpretation yes. of it. And after I read this, this story, I prayed to God and I asked him, why have I not been dreaming all my life? Since I was a little kid, I never remembered any of my dreams until four months ago. Wow. Nothing. I go to bed, I sleep peacefully. Go to bed, wake up like nothing. Then I have friends coming to me saying, I had this crazy dream last night, this and this happened. And I was like, God, why, why am I not having dreams? Why you never what's dreamed? No until four months ago. Never dreamed, never remembered a single dream. So I got on my knees and I prayed. I asked, I seeked him out. I was like, what's going on? Why can't I remember any dreams like Daniel? And then um, that night I had my first dream. And Christina, my roommate, I actually told her this dream after it happened. This was June 25th. It was a dream about, okay, it's very divided. One side, I was there with about 40, maybe 20 to 40 people. And then on this side was another army. It was about 50 to 60 people. So I'm standing there. I look down. This is how the, the dream begins. I look down. 
I had a gun on me. I look down, then I look up, and then I see this mighty giant, mighty giant with a gun. And he was pointing it at me. And then he started shooting, but the bullets just kept going right past me. So as, as he's shooting, adrenaline is going, and I'm like, oh, I, I guess I have to defend myself. So I pick up the gun, make the shot, he fell down. I was shooting all, everybody on the other side, they all fell. But as I turned around, every, people on my side were also wounded. So I go up, I was the only one who wasn't wounded at all. I don't have any scratches, I was like, oh, okay. So I went and I picked up the first person who was on my side of the, the war and I helped them up. And I called somebody else who was also protected and they helped them up too. And after I picked up the second person, I woke up from this dream and I was just shook. I was terrified, I was like, what does this mean? What's going on? So then I, I approached Christina and I, I told her about it. And um, that week I just kept praying and praying, God, what does this mean? What does this war mean? What, how, did, how do I apply this to my life? Um, so at that time I didn't understand it. I just let it be, I just kept praying for understanding. A few days later, I had another encounter with the Lord. It was on August 14th, so it was a few days later. Before I went to bed, I was praying and I kept still, I kept still thinking about that first dream he gave me because it was just so, it shook me to the core. I just, it just shook me. So I had another dream. This one was more vivid than the second one, the first one. This dream, I'm laying, I'm, looking at the scene there's darkness everywhere and there's this path there's this glowing part everything is dark except this road that's glowing it's glowing but it's it seems kind of narrow but it's wide enough for people to fit um so it's glowing and at the end of the 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 walkway is a huge gate glowing i mean just light coming from it and it's making the whole entire scene the whole entire scene um, light. And at the beginning of the walkway facing the gate is a person standing there, just like this. I'm looking down at this dream and saying, why is, why is he not walking towards the gate? Big gate, why is he not walking towards the gate? Um, so then I woke up from the dream and I'm like, okay, it's another dream. Second one that I can, I can actually remember. Um, I prayed for understanding and miraculously, I opened the word to Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So in Matthew 7, 13 through 14, it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many will enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Yes. So the interpretation of this dream, the, per the, the reason why the person wasn't going towards the gate because they knew it was leading to destruction. This is a mighty gate, big, very inviting, very warm. It seems like that's the right path to go on, but the person who was standing there had discernment not to go through the gate. They had the discernment not to go to the gate because the gate that we have to enter is narrow, it says, but narrows the road, but small is the gate and narrows the road that leads to life. Yes, yes. And, not o and only a few will find it. Hello. This is when I knew these dreams were from the Lord because he confirmed it with the word. Yes. At first I thought I was just coming, making these things up, but this is something I cannot make up my own. And he led me to this scripture, yes, straight yeah. to it. And this is before the, um, the eclipse happened. And I approached Pastor TC about it because I was so overwhelmed. I'm like, I had this vision this, when I was praying and I don't know what it means. And he, he confirmed it. You confirmed it with yes. the same scripture. Yes. And I confirm, it confirmed it too through the Holy Spirit. And I was just, I was in awe. So I still have the first dream on my mind. Mind you, this is before, I don't even know what's going on. August 20th is a Sunday. I start noticing a lot of people coming to me with illnesses, sicknesses, I mean strife, a lot of spiritual warfare that they can't see what's going on, coming towards me with their problems. And I'm just like, okay, what's going on? Oh my goodness. 
before that, Christina started having night, the night tremors and things like that. Monica, yes. Mm -hmm. So when, on August 20th, I, I got the interpretation to that dream. And that was the giant represented the enemy. And the enemy was going to be coming and trying to attack me and the church and everybody who was around my life. And it was a warning to say that um, people around me are going to go through spiritual warfare. People are going to suffer. People are going to be wounded. People are going to be very, very hurt. But at the end, we're still going to overcome because we're children of God. Yes. And I turned yes. around and I knew, like when Christina had her, the night tremors, it was before I had this dream, it was a warning yes. to say, I mean, things are going to happen in your life. People are going to come to you with problems. You may even get attacked, but don't, don't worry. Be stand firm on your word. Stand firm in the word of God. And he led me to Hebrews 4.12. Yes. Hebrews 4.12. Yes, we did. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. God is so amazing. good. Amazing, Jesus. Yeah. My version says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than the double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Yes. Yes. And I received that, and I, it just made sense how everything is going back to the Word and how we have to stand firm on the Word of God because it's alive, and it, it will lead us, and it yes. will guide us, yes. and it will give us all the answers that we need. Yes. So on August 20th, this is when I, before I went to bed at 10 o'clock, I gave all my weaknesses up to God. I said, I'm done. I, I don't want to struggle anymore with um, seeking books that are not of you, seeking TV shows that are not of you. Um, I, gave, I declared authority over my life. Jesus is the authority of my life. All my insecurities, strongholds. And um, after I prayed that prayer, I felt the spirit of peace, supernatural peace overcome me. And I went to bed. And I haven't told anybody this. On August uh, 20th is when a, um, I had a horrendous dream. I had a really horrendous dream. Uh, woke me up in night sweats. It was about like 2 or 3 a.m. And I kept praying 2 Timothy 1, 7 over my life because I was, I was scared. I was scared. I've never experienced fear like that. I will talk to Pastor TC about this dream afterwards because it's, it just shook me the way it was. It was a very demonic dream. And 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 7, the Spirit of God doesn't make you timid but gives you power, love, and a sound mind said it over and over again, and as I was praying, I, had the, I heard the Holy Spirit say, Temina, fast and pray now, starting now at 2 a.m. I fasted and prayed for four days, four and a half days with minimum water, nothing. And through that time, I just kept praying and asking God for provision and protection in my sleep and at night. And um, on August 24th at 10 p.m., um, I finally had the peace. I wasn't afraid anymore. I felt the peace that I felt four days prior. And as before I went to bed, I was in prayer and I had another vision. This time I was awake. It was a vision that I had in prayer. And this vision, God took me to a giant field. There were beautiful trees. It was, it was beautiful, a nice, warm, beautiful day. And there were trees, grass, the sky was bright blue and, and the clouds were just white. And I'm looking down at this scene, and at the edge of this forest, there was a dark figure. About maybe seven feet in front of the dark figure was a woman, blonde, beautiful hair, uh, a white t-shirt and jeans. So I'm looking down. As I get closer into this, this scene, I turn away, and then I look up. This woman transformed into this mighty giant eagle very, very beautiful white giant eagle. Um, the, this eagle, I tried to draw it, but this eagle had um, yellow wing tips, wing tips, and it was just, it went, she, the woman transformed this eagle and flew at the sky, the beautiful blue sky. And as it's flying up, I'm just watching the eagle go up, and I felt it was so real. I, I reached out my hand to touch the eagle, and then I, I woke up, and I was shaking. I was like, what does this mean? I prayed, I just kept being in prayer for two hours that night. A few days later, um, I actually, supernaturally went to Revelations 12. 
mind you, I, I read Revelations two years ago. I didn't quite understand Revelations, but he led me directly to Revelations 12. And to the section, um, Revelations 12, I'll read 13 through 14. Mm -hmm. It says, when the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had, who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given two wings great of a great eagle so that she may fly to a place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be, where she would be taken care of at time, times and a half out of the serpent's reach. As he gave me interpretation of this dream, the figure behind the woman was the enemy trying to chase her. She transformed into the giant great eagle to escape from the enemy because she was going to a place of protection from the wilderness, this wilderness that's going on. And I approached Pastor TC about the dream um, the, week, the weekend after, and I told him God re revealed me, to, he led me to this scripture. And at this time, I still didn't understand the meanings of visions and dreams. I'm just keep going, and I keep going into prayer. And um, as I had that vision on the 20th, I didn't have another vision for a week or another dream or I couldn't remember anything for a week. And I just kept, I kept fasting every so often as, as the Holy Spirit led me to fast. And during that, those times, I was reading Romans 12 too, which says, um, do not confirm the patterns of this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. Yes. Falling back to weaknesses and grace, we cannot be transformed without acknowledging God's grace and I began that week I was acknowledging God's grace in my life he's revealing these visions and dreams I wasn't ready to speak them first because he was still revealing to me weaknesses that had to be put to death before I could stand in front of everybody to speak because it says in Matthew 20, 23 12 that those those who are humbled no those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted and the reason I cannot, I couldn't say that because I needed to be humbled through my weaknesses, through the times I was suffering with the dreams and all the manifestations of the enemy trying to, trying to get me in my dreams. He taught me how to be weak and how to just reach out my hands and say, God, you are, you are the master of my life. Yes. And as, I, as he humbled me in that experience, I've learned that he's given me this confidence that isn't for myself, but it's through the Holy Spirit. And that's why I can stand in front of you just to speak the glory of God and, and what he says. And I just think of John 1, 4, where Jesus came from, where it says, Jesus came from Father full of grace and truth. And without acknowledging his grace, we can't receive the gifts that he has for us and the visions and the ministry that he has for us. And through that, through that time, I mean, I've had, dream, I've, I've had visions where God has taken me to a hospital room. A man is sitting in the hospital room with... I can remember him vividly. He had black hair, a tie-dye jacket, some blue jeans, and he was holding a Tic Tac bar, and he was just walking back and forth. And he sat down, and I knew he was in sorrow. He was in the hospital room. He gets up, and then he goes into an ICU room. I wake up from this vision in tears, weeping, weeping, because I, I felt his, sor his sorrow. He was there. I prayed for him. This was the first experience where I... It was a vision where I could actually speak and pray for somebody as I'm watching them suffer. And through that, God has given me, he's given me so much sorrow that he feels for his people. Sometimes I just, I'm, I'm in praying, I'm just weeping. I, I'm just, just weeping out of nowhere. Weeping, just calling out to God. These visions where he's taken me to a room where there's an angel sitting in um, a chair in this great white big room playing a harp but nobody's there so I'm filled with tears as I wake up from these visions and then this week I had a another vision too where he gave me interpretation from it last night um, there was this very crumbly looking very crumbly looking um, church a Roman church on the side of the walls was just painted red and white and it, it was two tiers, two tiers of this church. And 
there was somebody was speaking and I'm sitting in the in the pews and the Holy Spirit was just moving and moving and then the person who was speaking called me up to say something so I just go up and I'm proclaiming the Word of God I'm like praise God praise Jesus he's he's coming soon he's coming soon and as I continue to speak the crowd more people are filling the seats more people are filling the seats he's getting up and they're getting up and they're cheering and as I walk back to my seat, there's this Indian woman who's coming and who's like, praise God, thank you. Can you put an offering on this, on this plate, in this gold plate? So I, I, open, I, turn my, I open my bag and there's money. There's money, there's, one, there's $2, $2 bills and a $25 bill. Um, and they were glowing golds. And I, as I opened my bag, I took out the dollar bill and I gave it to the um, Indian woman who had a gold plate. I give her the dollar bill. And as I wanted to reach out to get the $25 bill, I zipped up my bag before I could pick it up. So I prayed for interpretation of that dream and, and I realized that one, the, the symbolism, the, the meaning of one is God. So me speaking in front of the church was a new ministry that God was giving me. God was, is gonna control where I'm going. And through grace, as I, as I put the dollar in his plate, in the woman's plate, he just showed me that the dollar just means him. I need to focus on him. And that's all I need is him, just to continue to focus on him. And, and that's just, all you need to give people is him. Exactly. Praise the Lord. That's all I need to give people. So thank you for the spirit of boldness. Thank you, Pastor TC, for letting give me. Give the Lord a great big Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you